Hello, I'm Tiffany McTaggart from SAC Consulting, bringing you this week's Rural Roundup for the Farm Advisory Service. The days are very gradually getting a little bit longer and farmers can be seen out ploughing in the fields or spreading organic manures when the weather allows. If you're in a nitrate vulnerable zone, make sure you check what, what your close periods are and make sure you abide by them. When you are allowed to start applying your um, manures after your close period, make sure you wait until the weather conditions are correct for you applying it. There has been a change to the slurry regulations from the 1st of January 2023. You are no longer allowed to use rain guns or high trajectory splash plates for applying your slurry. If you are a contractor, you'll now be required to use low emission precision equipment for applying your slurry. If you are a dairy farm with over 100 milking cows, you're also required to use precision equipment. Likewise, if you are a beef unit with over 200 beef livestock units. If you are a smaller farm with under 200 beef livestock units or under 100 milking cows, you may be exempt from this and it will be 2027 before you're required to comply with these rules. Make sure you go and have a look at the legislation and make sure that you're complying with the rules. Some farmers will be beginning to lamb just now, whilst others have another couple of months before lambing begins. Either way, now is a great time to get stocked up on all the equipment that you're going to be needing during this busy period, whether for lambing or for calving. There is a warning out that there might be a naval iodine supply issue. The reason for this is that there has been a cease in production in Chile, which is where uh, most of the iodine comes from. Due to this, make sure you get hold of it early and be aware of the price, potential price changes. And if you find that you're struggling to get iodine, you can speak to your vet and they'll be able to advise you on alternative product products which are available as well as having a look at your shed hygiene. Many of you will have been delighted to hear the Agri-Environmental Climate Scheme announcement last week. If you applied in 2022 you should now know if you were successful or not. If you're looking to apply in 2023 your application window opens on the 30th of January. If you're looking to apply for slurry storage the deadline for this is the 24th of March 2023. If you're looking to apply for agri-environmental options and for organic options, this closes on the 7th of June 2023. If you're interested in the EEC slurry storage option, applications are due on the 24th of March 2023. This is so that they can be looked at, scored and assessed with contracts given out aimed for the end of April 2023. Once you've got your contract, they're looking for you to have completed the work and paid for it by the end of February 2024. So it's quite a quick turnaround time this time. If you're looking to apply for organic conversion or organic maintenance, there is no longer a cap on the area which you can apply for. Capital items there has been a change this year with some of the usual items being suspended. This is unfortunately due to budgetary constraints. You will not be able to apply for restoring dry stone walls and also there is no funding available for improving public access. Have a look on the Rural Payments and Services website for a full list of what the changes have been. For the 2023 scheme years, there's also a limit on how many hedgerows you can plant. For each application, this is limited to 500 linear metres. For clarity, previously suspended options remain so in 2023. For example, the creation of species rich grassland. And finally, if you're looking at managing a designated site in the 2023 EECS application, make sure you contact Nature Scott as soon as possible and speak to them as they will be able to help and guide you on what is suitable for the specific site. Thanks for listening and we'll see you again next time.